Hey guys, this is Ashley and Rest, and this is another episode of She Wolf Alchemy. Today we are talking about traveling, going different places, getting different perspectives, learning new things, and just the impact that that can have on your life, on your growth. <laughs> The impact that that can have on your life, on your growth and development as a person, your perspective, worldviews, and also some fun stuff about just travels as well. So, Ress, have you ever traveled somewhere that like, or had a travel experience that you were like, oh, this, this changed my life? Yeah, yeah. I feel like I'm always having travel experiences and feeling like this changes my life. Um, as you know. I don't know this, but uh, my dad, my bio dad was a diplomat. And so I grew up traveling. I grew up every summer vacation, winter break, spring break, traveling to wherever he was. Usually he was somewhere in South America. That's pretty much where most of the countries he stayed in were. And so I did a lot of traveling. I actually lived in a different country with him for about two years in my childhood as well. And um, those were... Um, you know, traumatizing. Sure. Yeah. But, you know, in the long run, also great learning lessons that uh, kind of change and help me develop as the woman I am today. I am actually really glad for it. I feel like especially when I first moved to like Atlanta, especially I feel like it came up a lot. It made me realize how differently I saw the world because I've had these experiences. I had experiences where I was aware, like, oh, there's whole different ways to look at this. Like the, the way we, you know, y'all know we the only people that do this, this the way. The whole rest mm -hmm. of the world does this whole other thing another way. Um, so yeah, I feel like traveling has had a huge, big impact on my life just in general. But I will say that for my 30th birthday, me and you were supposed to go to Costa Rica. We decided not to go the day before. Uh, <laughs> that was a mess. It's fine though. But I was like, it's my 30th birthday. I still need to go somewhere. And I went to like a beach and like the Gulf Shores area. And that was really big for me. A matter of fact, that was the start of me. Like I was at a job. I started to like just hate. I was going through like a major depressive episode and like being able to get away from my environment. And just like explore nature. That was a big part of me. Like I was walking around the beach. I was walking in national parks. I was like just exploring nature, like had me come back feeling so refreshed, just being able to, to be taken out of my environment. And like, literally I came back and was like, oh, I'm quitting this. And I'm completely yeah. cutting this off with this person. And like, matter of fact, I came back and that's when I decided, like I came back, I was like, I'm gonna be celibate. Like I <laughs> went there just, just, in the depressive episode or some bullshit. And I came back and was like, okay, so eat, love, pray. Like, let's, let, let, that's what we about to do. What about you? I mean, same. I've definitely had a lot of travel experiences that have given me really good perspective on things. But yeah, I mean, I traveled a lot when I was a kid because my mom was in the military. But as an adult, like, I, like I'm thinking of one. I, I went to Cancun with a friend of mine for her birthday. And not like it was like... I mean, it was, it was a different kind of trip. So that one changed my perspective in different ways because that was like my first time going on like an all-inclusive, like luxurious kind of <laughs> kind of trip. And I swear, I felt like I had never been on vacation before. Like when I was there, I was like, oh, oh, this is vacation. Like this is like, you know what I mean? Like it was all-inclusive. I didn't have to make too many decisions. Like. They would bring the food to me wherever I was at, being like just catered to, just all. It was just, it was, it was like, oh, this is, I, I must do this. Like, <laughs> like more frequently. Uh, whereas in before, a lot of my trips would be, you know, I'm just I'm just trying to get there. I'm just trying to see what I'm trying to see, do whatever it is I'm trying to do. So I'm trying to get, you know, a cheap room or, you know, whatever. I'm just trying to make it work on my budget. But that trip. <laughs> one that was like oh this is worth it like it was worth every penny kind of like what you were saying about like coming back to to your regular everyday life and being like yeah nah <laughs> <laughs> i know i came back this is like, how i'm living 90 yeah, percent of the time yeah. no this is not gonna work i was like man how can i add luxury how can i add mm -hmm. like this like to my day how can i make things more soothing and I don't know, just not all this rush, 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 rush around. So 
I remember when you came back from a vacation and have this conversation because you were telling me that you were actually were talking to me about the hotel and you were just like, it was so nice. Like I actually wanted to stay there. And I was like, and this was a huge thing for me. Meek will tell you, I am such a stickler for where we stay in. Like when me and Meek were in undergrad, you know, broke 19 years old, like we broke, broke. And we would be traveling like back and forth to like Atlanta or Miami or wherever. And I remember the first time me and her decided to travel together and um, I let her set it up and she put us in a Motel 6 and I was like, oh, hell no. No, no. no. <laughs> like never again. And if y'all in Atlanta, cause we came to Atlanta, it's the Motel 6 by downtown. Like when you're getting off the highway and I was just like, girl, what? And so like after that, I was like, I, I ain't doing everything. And they were like, the W. We gotta pay $40 to park. What, what, why are we kidding? And I was like, oh no where I lay my head, I want to feel safe. Mm -hmm. it's our, but also I want to be able to just lay in and feel comfortable staying in the room in case I'm tired and not feel like it is so gross. We got to get out. But I remember you came back from your trip and you telling me that like, yeah, and it was just so comfy. And I was like, Ashley, what was you doing those morning? <laughs> oh, vacation to get out in these streets to do I this. Mean, yeah. And I was like, I don't care. <laughs> We're not doing anything I, under four stars. I hear you. Yeah, nah, it was more, yeah, I'm, I'm here to see the city. I'm not even in the room long enough to care that much. I mean, as long as it's clean, you know, other than that. But yeah, I never went out of my way. I mean, I have in like smaller ways. Like I know my first like solo trip. Mm -hmm. I remember I came here to where I live now. I came to Charleston. And that was one time where it was like I had a discount. Like I could have. I could have stayed at one place for like this rate, but I ended up paying like a higher rate to stay at like a hostel. But I stayed, but I had like an individual room at the hostel and it was like downtown and it was all cutesy and all this other kind of stuff. So it was like a part of the, like, oh, it would be more of the experience. Yeah. Like be in this location and not have to drive all over the city and stuff like that. That was really cool. But that's probably one of the only times where I really was like, Oh, usually if there if there's any other upgrades, like somebody else did it. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. I'm definitely the upgrade person. Yeah, one of my friends, when I travel with him, he's usually, well, his thing is like, I don't want to travel in your budget. No. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to travel in my budget. Well, if we travel in your budget, you're going to have to. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. Do you remember and how hard it was when me and you were trying to book for Costa Rica? Cause I was like, look at this one. It's right. It has an affinity pool, and it's by the waterfall. He was like, press. <laughs> <laughs> okay, like, okay. Was this anyway. one is like a hundred dollars cheaper. So we gonna go, and we we came to a mutual understanding okay. and agreement. Mm -hmm. uh, that then didn't work out because we 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 did not do oh, our sorry. research, and it was an hour and a half away from the airport. That it that did happen. It was it was that a lie. Happen. Yeah, and then we realized the night before we was gonna have to pay like an extra like one fifty each to buy there, and then to get a ride back. And then on top of that, it was like you got to bargain with the locals, and you got. And I was like, girl, I just don't. Neither one of our Spanish is good enough. That's too long. <laughs> and like the hotel we wanted was like in a very tropical, like foresty area. I was just like, I just feel like we shouldn't be getting lost in the forest when we don't know the language. I just, I don't know. I feel like maybe we shouldn't do that right now this close to my Saturn return, I just feel like that is a recipe <laughs> for a disaster for me to get lost in another country in the forest, in the forest. It was also very like kind of still in the thick of COVID. Like we were just coming yeah. out of it. And I remember Costa Rica had like a surge mm -hmm. and I, I remember feeling guilty because I was like, so Americans got the vaccine and now we're just gonna like mm -hmm. go stuff in everybody's country. Like I remember being kind of conflicted about that idea as well. We definitely had a very uh, social worky conversation where we're like, ethically, I mean, we're helping the economy, but like, we had a whole week. Me and you stayed up on the phone for like four hours before the night before us, supposed to leave. Trying to decide, just like, nah, we're not going to do this. Yeah. But another note on that is like, stop going to Hawaii, y'all. Them people keep telling y'all they don't want y'all coming there. <laughs> I did not know this. Wait, what's happening in Hawaii? What are we doing? What are we ruining? Everything. The natives are saying like, please stop coming here. Please stop trying to live here. 
because mm-hmm. y'all are coming here and you're raising up the property value from like people who are natives and live here and you're messing that up for us. Also, y'all are throwing trash everywhere. Like you're just being bad to the environment and <laughs> to mm-hmm. the industry. And we would really like it if y'all stop coming. And that's and people are not doing it. I did not know that. I did not know that at all. Really? No, I had not heard about that. I've been to Hawaii, but I haven't been to Hawaii since I was like 10. My mom had to go to a conference and took me. Yeah, where I was just like wandering the streets of Hawaii as a girl while she was in meetings all day. Just, it was a different time. I think about it just briefly. Yeah, that is a part of my traveling is that my parents just let me wander the streets as a little black child (laughs) in strange countries because I definitely remember catching the bus in Colombia all that summer, going to the mall, going to the movies, just, just shit I wasn't doing in America. Shit like I knew I was not allowed to do back home. But you know what? That's a thing though. Cause even when, so I spent a few years in Germany and I was pretty young and I had a lot of freedom. I had way more freedom than I probably ever had in the States as a kid. Like I was gone. (laughs) And I think it was just, I don't know. I mean, that's one of those things where it's like, was it safer or did it just feel safer? Did my mom just feel safer? I don't know. But I know that like I had so much free range to go wherever I wanted to go. I walked all over the place. We didn't live on base. I was everywhere. But it felt like as soon as I came back to the States, all that was over. Like I couldn't go, you know, like it just yeah. right back under that same type of restriction. And I remember the shift. Like it was so kind of dramatic for me to go from the wandering wherever I wanted (laughs) (laughs) to like, oh, I need adult supervision every damn where I go. Yeah, no, I think because I was always in that dual world where I'm like, this is how we act when we're with dad. That Mm -hmm. don't care. That is not Mm -hmm. paying you no type of attention. Mm -hmm. Um, So you do whatever you want versus when I was mom. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But yeah, no, I uh, definitely think about it. Like, yeah, I... Yeah, there's a couple of times I was living in different cities and I was just Tommy pickling it. Like just just having all types of little adventures my parents knew nothing about and strange distant lands. And now we was 30 years old and I was thinking about just 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 enjoying the forest with my buddy in Costa Rica. Mm-hmm. And I was like, no, that's too dangerous. You know, <laughs> you know, you know the stars aligning, I feel like you should not do that. You really, I, you do, I, I, it's not that I don't concern myself with safety, but you are definitely far more concerned with it than I am. A lot of things, things, yeah, that you consider unsafe, I probably don't even even think about. You'd be like, I looked it up and the rating of the whatever the hell in this Mm -hmm. country, this rating, it's red or some shit. I'm like, girl, I don't know nothing about that. (laughs) But so also, but that is like pure experiences because like, again, like my dad was a diplomat. So I remember the one country I did go live with him with, like we had to go to this like family conference and like in that family conference, they were teaching me how to jump out of cars. They were teaching Mm -hmm. me like when a person does this, they're about to kidnap you. Like, so (laughs) like that was my experience before I was going to countries. It was very like high alert. Hey, you're a little black child. Nobody's going to look like you from miles and miles away. People are going to come up to you, ask questions. Um, I remember dad straight up having a conversation with me like, hey, um, if you get kidnapped here, uh, yes, you're American, but you're black. So I'm going to need you to try your hardest not to get kidnapped. You ain't saying going to bargain for you like that. Like, I remember having those conversations. So, yeah, yeah. When I travel out the country, I do look up stuff like that. What is the scoring travel-wise? Oh, no, it's red civil unrest i don't know guys it's late (laughs) but it's late i mean that's fair i mean i guess that's good good awareness to have because i should be like "Eh, eh, whatever (laughs) getting the hell out of here the u.s ain't safe any damn way even when i took my first um solo trip i now i do remember being like because my mom raised me to believe that like behind every around every corner someone was waiting to bash you over the head kidnap you rape you whatever the case may be mm-hmm. so like you know don't have fun but uh, <laughs> go out there but don't don't have fun not do too much so one i didn't tell her that i was going to go on a trip by myself because i didn't want her to fill my mind with like i saw this dateline special you know and all this crap that she does <laughs> 
But even I had to have the realization of like, oh, you live in Atlanta by yourself. Like you literally go about the earth by yourself all the time. I don't think you're any more or less safe from here to there. I didn't know nobody in Atlanta anyway. <laughs> that time, so I was like, it's the same amount of safety. Let me just go. But I'm, I literally didn't tell her because I was like, I don't want her to scare me. Because she definitely scared me away from many things <laughs> that I wanted but to try. I will say. There is a difference between dangers that you're aware of and you kind of know because you're aware of that area, what dangers for them look like versus dangerous mm -hmm. everywhere. Because I will tell you one place I was living and this is when I was a kid, one of the dangers they used to tell us is like, do not give money to people on the street. Mm -hmm. And don't, when you're eating, when you're seeing someone come up to you in a restaurant, like especially like you were just like an open area type restaurant, they were like, do not let them get the food. Like automatically, they were just like, be very like, aggressive. No, whatever, whatever. And of course, I'm like, no, you give the people the food. Da, 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 da. Um, and yeah, no, there was a lot. It's a reason because they had certain skills that happened. Like if people was like, yeah, get that. Mm -hmm. One of the things like that's big for me today is like when I'm in the car, I lock my car door because it was a huge thing at that time. When I lived in that country, my dad were like, also, because again, we're Americans, my dad's car has diplomatic plates. People are noticing he has diplomatic plates and Americans were getting kidnapped at red lights. So they will pull at your door. If your car door was open, they will snatch you out, throw you in a like they had a whole system ready or whatever. Um, that's not something I had to worry about in America. Like nobody was doing kidnappings at that extreme. Like I had to watch out for white vans, free puppies. Do you want a lollipop type skip? Like that was, that was the American kidnapping program that I had to be mm -hmm. aware of. Yeah. So I kind of understand the whole like, yeah, but I'm, I'm out here in Atlanta, single woman, wild and out, I'm safe here, but you're more familiar with like the things you got to watch out for in Atlanta. That's a valid point. Yeah, you're right. Well, like, yeah, in, in the U S in general, it's like, ah, mm -hmm. I know, I know what to be afraid of here versus like yeah. countries. I know what's sketchy here versus if I'm somewhere else, I'm like, maybe this is cultural. And then uh, now you want the news. <laughs> maybe this is just you're trying to be politically guys. correct. Now you want a t-shirt. <laughs> now your kidneys are missing. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, but there isn't only travel out of the country. I do want to emphasize that we are talking about going out of the country, which, which I do think anyone who has the opportunity to, to leave the country, I really think you should, because kind of like you were saying earlier, like you do, you do get a difference of like, oh, wow, that's how they do things. Like I went to Switzerland at the end of last year <clears throat> and just being on the train, just being in their public transportation and being like, wow, yeah. this functions so well. Things <laughs> happen all the time. You know, it's pleasant. It smells nice. Like, it was just like, not that I, there are places I'm sure that have great public transportation. I haven't found them as a person who enjoys public transportation. <laughs> I like riding trains and buses and stuff. I hate driving. But yeah, in Swiss, like it was like a whole, but I remember I kept having these moments of like, man, it sure seems like this could be something that would be really great back home. Sure wish we could try this. And we just seems mighty doable. Hmm. Yeah. And living in the States, like, and, and living in places like Atlanta, sometimes I think we do forget how that we, that we as black people are a minority, especially when you live in areas that are kind of predominantly black, you can kind of forget that like, oh, we make up a very, I'm, I'm from Ohio. So I have never had that feeling in my life, but proceed. Wait, what do you mean? <laughs> like forgetting that black people are a minority. Oh, no, I'm from Ohio girl. Like I'm, I'm oh, very, not I'm there. there. And girl, that, that's talk about things you learn. I've had a whole other, I mean, I've known that, but like, I live in some pretty diverse environments and I didn't realize that how much that, I don't know, but living in South Carolina has been quite something. That's all I'm gonna say. This is probably, I anyway. used to tell folks all the time, like right? I have, as a child, especially, I haven't traveled as much as I want to as an adult. But as a child, especially, I mean, I was a very well-traveled child and I've had lots of experiences, but I promise you nothing gave me more of a cultural shock than moving from Northern the U.S. to the South. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Nothing has really prepared me for, I have never had such a cultural shock as I did when I moved from Ohio to like Atlanta. 
when I tell you one of the biggest, the craziest things for me, I remember working, I don't know, I think I was like intern for this place. And we had to go to this like government meeting, like with all these politicians. And it was just this huge thing. And I luckily just got to be a part of it. And they started this meeting with a prayer and somebody sang like glory, hallelujah. And I was like, is this not? Is this not a professional meeting? We, we're talking about like, mm -hmm. and I was the only person that like, you know, hold hands and bow. I was the only person like, first of all, don't touch me. And was like looking <laughs> around confused. Like, why are we, this is a state building. This is a federal building. Why are we starting a meeting with the, and like stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Like the first couple of years I moved to Atlanta, like people asking me like, oh, what was your church? And this was earlier. This is like 2014, y'all. But like people used to like, as a part of introductions, like, and where do you go to church? And I was like, <laughs> and I had just came out of the church, like came out of like, okay, this is not for me. I need to find my own spiritual path. So I was still in my like, yeah. Huey Freeman stage like I was still like you can't talk to me about God without me like getting kind of low-key aggressive I was still in that stage mm -hmm. so it was hard I was just being aggressive at all places and times and I finally had to go like you got to choose your battles like you can't you can't but it was a wow. thing and also with dating was huge y'all at one point in time I thought I was gonna be a minister I was meeting men in the church meeting men who were going to school for, for theology and they weren't asking me about my my prayer practices in church. I was going on dates in Atlanta and men were asking me about my faith. <laughs> now, it's a real, it, that's a thing. Now, keep in mind, they weren't going to church. They weren't living by the Bible. They weren't nothing. They wanted to make sure that if I came to Sunday dinner and their mama grilled me, I could have this conversation. Because Lord knows they weren't doing none of that. That's the part. That That's the part to highlight is... <laughs> We, we ain't even on that topic, but you're right. I'm, I'm not even going to go there. <laughs> About people who are only Christian in word and got the nerve to, to, to be judgmental. My point was that was like, that was not a thing in Ohio. That was not a thing anywhere else I traveled. Like, so when I moved here and that was something that happened to me frequently, like not for, especially that first year or two, that first three years. And that was the oddest thing for me. And that, again, not just that, but there were other things where I was like, the cultural shock I had just traveling in the U.S. I see, I think, yeah, I, I, moving all over the country, I didn't have many of that. And especially coming from like Oklahoma to Georgia, because Oklahoma, it was especially Tulsa, was very, like the bishop, the church I used to go to, he used to say, call it the buckle of the Bible belt. Like, mm. it was pretty intense. So I definitely... But you're right. It was a unique experience to come and people would just be like, where do you go to church? What do you? Okay. But <laughs> <laughs> no, I had the realization of like, I remember listening to something where a guy was talking about how until he left his hometown, he didn't know the history of it. And mm -hmm. like, he was saying like in school, the history they had been given was, he was saying even their flag or their city state flag or whatever, I don't remember where it was, but like, it was of like a native like riding on horseback like leaving to you know and like waving goodbye or some crap because that's the story that they had been given that like they peacefully left and was like y'all can have this land <laughs> mm -hmm. no problem we'll, we'll just go on over here and then he was living somewhere else he had like moved to the south and like somewhere else had learned that like there was this huge freaking massacre <laughs> that had happened oh gosh yeah girl like like in that place and and like that's how that land was taken there was all this conniving mm. like there was a lot yeah and he, like i never freaking knew that like no one ever taught that version and i think it's i know for me it's frustrating as someone who's like i paid attention to school so i know y'all lied because <laughs> <laughs> i was listening right i wrote it down and i remembered it as facts it's so imp important for i just want i just want I just want so many red hatters, so many mega folks to just go to like France or Italy and, and see how America is viewed outside of America, because there are some beliefs that we still hold on to that are from like the 50s, uh, where that is not how the rest of the world sees us. Y'all, when Trump won election, y'all, so my dad, um, my biological father, well, any father, actually, great year I've ever had, but Rolling Stone. 
So I have siblings that are full Ghanese. I have siblings that are Trinidadian. I have siblings that are in Suriname. I have siblings that are just a lot of places. I have a sibling that's, uh, I believe, in Barbados. I have siblings that are Malaysian, like just, just all over. And so at one point in time, we had like a family group chat. And when Trump won the presidency, they were in a group chat roasting me, y'all. They were asking me, oh, do you need to immigrate over here? Or is it okay? Like, that was what I was getting in the group. It was not, some of the things that we believe about ourselves, that is not how the rest of the world sees us. And I think sometimes you got to step out to see from mm. other people's view, but not only from other people's view, but also like when we have these beliefs where we're like, yeah, because we have to have goods because it would be wild, wild west. And then you go and see how many other countries that are highly industrialized countries that don't have guns and 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 they don't even understand why we get terrified at the sound of a car backing up because we think somebody is about to do a mass shooting even if they that is an have... american thing to worry about mass shootings it is even if they do have a lot of guns like in Swi uh, switzerland they do but they get like the reverence for handling a weapon mm. versus here, it's just like people collect guns. They need the biggest gun. They need the, mm. like the fact that for some people like gun owning is a whole hobby. Like yeah. it's a hobby. It's just what they do for fun. It just blows my mind. But anyway, but that, yeah, we don't have that or I don't say we, cause I don't give a damn about guns. <laughs> like, I, yeah, our country doesn't have that reverence for like this is a deadly weapon and it should be used in extreme circumstances. Like, no, people are just like, it's 4th of July, pow, pow, pow. Let me fire off bullets in the air. I ain't got that going on. And I, I agree with you. It's good to go other places, have that perspective. And just like you said, asking people like, well, not even asking, but hearing the view. Mm -hmm. Like, um, I know, you know, someone, someone a long time ago who was from Liberia, and I remember asking him, like, well, what do you think of, like, Americans, and even particularly Black Americans? Oh, and I do not like having that conversation with the discriminator. <laughs> I try my hardest not to it have was a very, that like, conversation oh. with the diaspora. It was, yeah, it was very much on, like, uh, but, but well, one of the things that he was saying was interesting to him was, like, well, coming here and seeing that, like, y'all got poverty, too. Mm -hmm. was like a interesting thing. Be and then when he was telling me his perspective, I was thinking like, well, damn, if all you had was TV, that is what you would think. And I mean, to be fair, mm -hmm. the same with us, right? Like oh, yeah. all you had to go off of about what you knew about certain countries was what you saw on TV. You would think like, like, like the way they portray Africa, right? Like, oh, look at all these hungry people. And they're sad and there's flies everywhere and all this other stuff. And, then, and that's why I'm thankful for stuff like TikTok or people being able to like mm -hmm. share their real life experiences. <laughs> Cause media is doing us wrong. Mm -hmm. But yes, I think the whole like being able to step outside and not necessarily so you can be like, oh, my country is so cringy, but like to help you see the things you have blockers to. And now that also goes like I was saying earlier, you know, we're not only talking about traveling out of the country, but within the U.S. on its own. I mean, it's so big from coast to coast, from whatever one area to another that there's plenty of like you can definitely go from one part to another and have a completely different experience. Mm -hmm. um, and different people have different, even in the same state, because you lived in Oklahoma, I lived in Oklahoma. I only made it 10 months before I was like, I got to get an escape plan to get the fuck out of <laughs> Oklahoma. I did not enjoy my time in Oklahoma. Yo, yo mans, yo mans, Kanye, whenever he does, he used to do a song in Mitch, Oklahoma, just like, yeah, I just moved to Oklahoma to live in my aunt's house, whatever he would say, because he was doing these positive things about Oklahoma. And I'm like, what? Oh, what, what part of Oklahoma are y'all at? This was not <laughs> my experience. I, my whole time in Oklahoma felt like I was in a, oh gosh, like a Black Mirror episode, like a Ooh. Twilight Zone. It was just horrible. It was just hard. I just kept having the weirdest conversations, me and the oddest of people. It was a horrible, horrible, horrible experience. Socially, romantically. I didn't even have a romantic life the 10 months I was there. I tried once and I was like, you know what? 
there is something in the water here. I'm good. I'm good. Work. Oh, I was having the weirdest work experiences. Oh my gosh, that was the weirdest job. Oh gosh. Everything was weird. That's those people. I hope they made it. I hope they're all right. It was horrible. Mm -hmm. Mm, Yeah. But I said that to say, like, I was in Oklahoma City. You were in Tulsa. And you're like, no, it was cool. Like, it really was. (laughs) I mean, whoa. (laughs) There are (laughs) issues also. Like, let's not. Okay. I had a good time with my people, my friends, my life that I had. But Tulsa is segregated as hell. Yeah. Yeah. And hell i was driving through whole areas where i was being treated like i was the first black person they ever saw yeah in oklahoma like i used to because i work with uh and i was working in the criminal justice legal social working space and i would have to take clients to court so sometimes my clients would be arrested in like oklahoma city but like they might have a pending charge in hobuckville three hours away in the middle of goddamn nowhere and I was like, it was just being warned by coworkers, like, girl, <laughs> okay, so get gas before, try, try not to stop once you get there. Okay. All right. All right. You know what? The client's a white woman. I think they won't ask too much. She really likes you. So you guys should be good. Like I was having whole mm-hmm. experiences out there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I wasn't, I, thankfully I wasn't having that. I was around. Yeah. 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 I, 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 I did not like fucking Oklahoma. It was not a fun <laughs> time. <laughs> like, like I, I have been in some places, but I didn't have a fucking Oklahoma bed. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. 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 Traveling. Different experiences. Know what, know what your <laughs> brothers and sistren are going through in other areas. <laughs> not for real. I'm listening like, there's no, I just, I'm I'm thankful for the experience I've had for the most part. <laughs> but yeah, traveling, living in different places too, and actually having the experience of getting to be like engrossed in somewhere, I think is a good thing. I think on that tip, I think it's really important. Like when it's safe to do so, especially um outside the country, but even in the country, try to get involved and get to see what the actual local life is like outside of the touristy areas. When it is safe to do so. <laughs> the cartel is now sending apology notes but like stay on the resorts until we figure out what's going on there maybe y'all should stay on resorts but when it's safe to do so i think that is such a big part of it because also sometimes you travel to places and your perception of what that place is like and you know all of those things is so morphed because you're in kind of like their disneyland part like when you go mm-hmm. to disneyland is disneyland a good representation of the u.s not really. It's fun. It's safe. It's the happiest quote unquote play dose on earth. But like, yeah, that's not like if you only stayed in the Disneyland resort, you didn't go outside, you did the rides, you stayed in their hotels and that's all you did. Yeah, at their restaurants to go back to your home country and be like, yeah, and I've been to the US. Like, I mean, yes, technically you have. But I wouldn't call that experience in the US. And I think that's a lot different than um you know, when you get to go outside and talk to locals, you get to go outside and see what their food is like when it's not morphed to fit American taste, specifically mm-hmm. at the hotel resort, to see what it's like to, you know, get some of the gifts that you want to bring back home that was woven by like local artisan, things like that. I think that also was really, really makes the experience, at least for me. I am I'm with you. I, I believe in that too. Like, like you said, when you can get out, I'm laughing, thinking about my mom recently going to Jamaica and had nothing but complaints, nothing but like, <laughs> oh my gosh, this, and this goes into us talking about like different ways that people travel, right? Like I'm yeah. someone who is like, if we are traveling to a location that is hot, right? Like it's tropical there you're not gonna hear me complaining about the heat <laughs> because I came here knowing it was gonna be hot. So like, I remember talking to my mom about like, how was your trip to Jamaica? She's like, it was hot. <laughs> <laughs> like, duh. <laughs> and even when I was like, well, how was the food? Oh my God. She was like, well, you know, they jerk everything over there. <laughs> I, just, I just had never heard such things. 
<laughs> but even then, when we really talked about it, they didn't go no. They stayed on the resort. They went. They went on like one little activity, and they was like, "Nah, we don't want to be out here like that." And then they stayed on the resort the whole rest of the time. I mean, oh, well, if I travel to an island and stay in a hotel the whole time, that's what I was like. You y'all. You don't get to talk about Jamaica. Like you don't get to say that like, oh, it was this or it was that because you did not actively go out. <laughs> when I asked her about the food and she said that, I was I should have hung up the phone. I, <laughs> I should have ended the con you know, they jerk everything over there. And she the fact that she said it like it was a bad thing, I was like, What? <laughs> I mean, some people like things that are jerked. <laughs> like, what are you talking about? Every now and then I hear the argument, oh, we just got to wait for the boomer generation to die. But like, I don't know if y'all be looking at any of these like mega extreme right, even some of the left, I, 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 you know, and I really want to start, start honestly stop doing the left right thing because the left has some unhinged as people as well. Bro, they circle all the way around, come out on the other side. And just, they dress it up in a very different way. And we just have not became good at spotting out their way. Like there's covert nonsense and there's overt nonsense. And we gotta start recognizing the covert nonsense because it is doing some 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 damage. That's why I like looking at other places and like their economy and politics as well. Because it's just mm -hmm. it's just interesting to just get that perspective of like, wow, there are other ways. Mm -hmm. Like I read this book, it's called The Geography of Bliss, and I love it. Like he travels around to what are what are have been rated as like the happiest countries. Mm -hmm. My critique of the book is that he didn't go to no African countries, and I just don't believe that there's none that he could have went to. But for all the ones he went to, like he gave an overview of like his experience, but he also talked about their politics, their economy, um, how people spend their leisure time, how people do their work, like their work-life balance, like all of these things to factor in, like, is this actually a happy place to live? And, oh man, it just blew my mind <laughs> to, to be like, wow, there are countries um, that prioritize different things. And like here we very much like, as a country, we assess our success based off of our was our gdp our gross domestic profit like how much money things are making yeah. versus there are places that consider like they care if their people are healthy or they care if their people are happy like mm -hmm. they have other measurements of saying oh we're a successful country because we have you know top education different standards mm -hmm. yeah even in places like I think it was like Denmark, which I think is noted as like one of the happiest places, like that whole little area there, but mm -hmm. just leisure, mm -hmm. going out to eat. And it's not like, get you to the table, get your food, get you to get the food mm -hmm. to you, get to eat. If you're going to sit here too long, you better tip good because you're taking mm -hmm. up space for somebody else to come sit down, hurry up, mm -hmm. you know, that type of stuff um, versus it's like you get a course. Oh, would you like to sit here and have a smoke break and some coffee and then we'll bring out your next course because mm -hmm. sit here all day if you like this is what we do like i remember reading that and i was like oh my god i love leisure <laughs> like yeah leisure is my favorite things and i really wish that i lived somewhere that allowed me to just be kind of moving at your own pace that's what i think of when i think of leisure i think of being able to just do things at my own pace yeah just remembering there are places that prioritize different things than how much money is being generated. Mm -hmm. But even going back to what we originally started off on, I think just really highlighting that sometimes traveling, just giving you a break from your everyday life is so needed and such a prescription for I'm feeling stuck, I'm feeling stressed. I'm feeling taking sometimes, even if it's like, all right, all I got is enough money for two days. Maybe I can drive six hours away. That's another state. What they, yeah. what they got that we don't got. And doing that could be so, 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 so helpful. I know when I really am stressed out, like that is my goal too. Like when I'm reaching, I want to get to a point where I don't feel like this has to be my last resort level. Mm -hmm. I want to get to a place where that's my first option. I'm like, you know, I'm just going to take a vacation. We we speaking out to existence. The universe been manifesting some shit for me today. So let me just put that out there while I got this like this juju going. While the universe is just like boom, bam, bop. This in your lap, that in your lap. Uh let that be my thing where I could just take a vacation whenever I want to. That could be my first resort answer to everything. Yes. Anywho, 
but I know for me in the past, definitely when I have felt so stressed, so stuck, even times when I've been really low, like just straight up depressed, I have found that taking a vacation, traveling has really helped me get out of that rut. Whether it was just being in a new scene, whether it was being far enough away from my problems, whether it was experiencing new things, seeing new cultures, talking to new people, seeing a new way of life, eating new food, shaking up the mundane in your life so you can have enough space to think about things in a new perspective. That has always been a big part of traveling for me. I'm glad you brought that up. Yeah, you're right. That's like... Cause I know, I know for me, sometimes just like you said, being far enough away to where it's like, well, I can't do anything about that stuff. Like I'm somewhere different. I get to be like, I know, was it last, last year I was really stressed and, and my birthday came and a friend of mine took me to Arizona and we did the nature thing and the, and all, all sorts of things. We, did all sorts of things. <laughs> we had a yeah, good time. Yeah. But like, I remember a moment of just like sitting there. Cause also we stayed at a resort. So it was like, you know, not having to worry about too much. Mm -hmm. So that was nice too. And I literally remember a moment of just sitting at dinner and being like, oh, man, like, I feel like, like I'm right here. Like just feeling present. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just like, there's nowhere else I want to be. There's nothing else I'm thinking about that I need to do or get done or whatever. Cause I'm on the other side of the dang country. I can't do it anyway. But it was just such a like, it was good. It was definitely what I needed at the time. But I remember having that moment of like, yeah. man, I'm very present mm -hmm. in a way that I can tell that I wasn't at home. Yeah. Yeah. When I, um, and I think it's definitely depending on the place you've been to, because I have definitely had trips to, again, beach resorts or I guess and just sit, listen to ocean. Like something about being near water really, it's so great. It's so great for like meditation purposes, for just being present purposes, but being in nature, especially, because I think it's also important to remember sometimes it's about where you travel to as well. And I have some traveling places where it just was not the place for relaxation. It was just not, and just not really realizing that till I got there. Did not realize that's what, that's what I was signed up for today. Especially when I was younger, like party type trips. Yes. Yep. versus you know, like specifically like I want to just relax in calmness, enjoy in peace. So I think, yeah, definitely keep that in mind. You might not have the same experience if you go into a party city, loud, yeah. known to, you know, that might not be what you need when you're like, I am so stressed, I'm at the max. Or maybe it is, depending on your personality, how you handle things. And also who you're traveling with. Like you, there are people who... <laughs> This happened to somebody yeah. recently who like went on a trip with some folks and was like, yep, those are not people I can travel with. Like you have to be mindful of like, sometimes some friends are great. Locally, y'all can do certain stuff, but like when you travel, like if you have different travel styles versus like with Russ and I, she's a planner. I'm less of a planner. I you don't- You are not a planner. <laughs> don't say less no. of a planner. You are not a planner. I plan stuff. It just don't be. <laughs> The way that you think it should be <laughs> but yeah. no not. okay yeah let's not let's not have this conversation on here yeah nah <laughs> not gonna lie. yeah i don't care to be beating stuff to death and having every little moment planned out it's just not my move but um versus Very much like see what vibes your vibes on vacation your I am vibes. i'm on vacation yes I, I, a big part of vacation for me is not thinking about stuff like that's why when people vacation like, for me is alive? making it back alive like that is a big part of vacation for me. Make it back alive. It's mm. not thinking too hard and being somewhere else. Most of the time when I'm traveling lately, it's been to hike. <laughs> Honestly, like even when I went to Switzerland, people are like, well, why are you going there? The mountains? I'm not, well, what you gonna do? Walk around, see what they over there doing? Like, I don't want to. Mm. <laughs> I'm to walk around and see what them people over there doing. That's where I, <laughs> what I'm usually doing when I go places. I don't want to, I don't want to think too much about it. I'm going to see all the sites I need to see. I'm going to come on home. But, uh, but yeah, but like you have people who like to go out and do excursions and have like, you know, an itinerary. And then you have some people who like to move with the, with the sunlight and, or, or, and like to stay on the dang resort, or mm -hmm. you got to travel with the, the people who are on that same wavelength that you can do those things with. 
Mm -hmm. uh, are y'all travel compatible? Check if you guys are travel deal. compatible. Yeah. But also, even like, um, even having those conversations though, like if you are going to be different kinds of people, it's like, okay, if I'm someone who's up at seven o'clock in the morning, I want to go get breakfast. Like I'm a, I know, I know I'm that I'm a early, I want to go eat <laughs> and stuff versus there are other people who, yeah, we on vacation. I'm not doing all that. I'm not getting up till noon, whatever. Mm -hmm. But even being able to talk about that, will you be okay if I go off and do my own thing? Mm -hmm. Or are we on this or does us traveling together mean we're together the whole time? Like, what does that look like? I feel like those are like important conversations to have before you travel with people. Yeah, you definitely want to make sure you're travel compatible. I know I don't see funny like going with groups because it's too many opinions. It's, it's too many different things. Like it's, if we're not all on the same wavelength, like I've definitely had that experience where it was like, just it was too it's too, too many people too many people wanting to do too many different things it felt like i couldn't do none of the stuff i wanted to do and then it was like somebody got an attitude and especially with oh, i do not want to travel with people who can't set aside their stuff mm -hmm. because we are here to have a good time you know like i know that things can come up that may seem like they are worth getting upset about or arguing about or whatever but like People in general who can't say, hey, this is a moment that is going to be memorable and I don't want to ruin it with my bad attitude <laughs> or by starting an argument. I don't want to be nowhere with them. That goes for people who can't understand, hey, it's Christmas. Let's not start an argument because this is a special day and we'd like for it to stay that way. We can do that later. I see I'm, I'm very much the opposite. Mm -mm. I'm, uh, I'm not going to ask anybody to table their shit. Uh, it. that's so selfish to me that's so fucking care. selfish to me it's selfish to ruin everything because you got attitude <laughs> but if shit comes up and it's a it, it's happening this big i'm not gonna be like it's christmas <laughs> let's talk about him cheating on you tomorrow like i, I just <laughs> seem selfish no. that seems so how is that selfish it's christmas unless he's cheating on you on christmas day Y'all can deal with that tomorrow. I don't think it's selfish. I think it's selfish to need to have that moment. But like, I've been on a trip with someone like- Grieve on your own time about your marriage. It ain't about grief. It ain't <laughs> <laughs> and don't come to Christmas, baby. If life is that hard, stay home. No, I'm that's saying talking about bringing stuff. I'm saying the stuff is happening at the time. It will happen. Okay, this happening, but no, no, I don't care. Because I guess because I've been on a couple of trips with like couples who will just like, that's y'all crap. That's your first like, mistake. I don't go on trips with couples. Yeah, no, never, that's, that's too never. risky. I am the I only couple I have been on a trip with and it has was, was risky then. <laughs> I've been like, I've been on a couple of, of group trips where it was like, everybody else was fine. And there was like one couple and then them and their crap ruined everything. Cause they get an attitude or they argue or they, I, no, no, you're right. With couples, that's different rules. I'm talking about if I'm on my girl's trip, she check her her ring, and there's, and there's some six inch hill hussy walking through her door. I'm not gonna be like Ashley. Now we on vacation. That's we're different. Home. That we're is later. different. Okay. Okay, we're about to go scuba diving. Okay. I don't okay. That. I, I don't need that. you to give this energy to the dolphins. <laughs> No, I don't mean like that. I mean like if you aren't traveling and you starting to get on my nerves. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> yeah, no, 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 no. I'm just I'm talking about real life shit. Like no, no. But also I don't go, I I just I don't believe on going with couples because it is it is messy. There's always gonna be always there's always gonna be one especially if it's more than one, there's always gonna be one couple that messed it up. But also like other females men be ruining it. Other few, <laughs> like, you know, it's eight of us, and you just gonna watch that girl walk by like that in front of all of them, like in the middle of us taking a video. Like, why would you do that? Why would you do that, sir? I th we are I all out roasting marshmallows, and you jump across the room to turn over your phone. Why would you? Why? Why? You know, Michelle fight men. Why would you do this? Why would you make all of us uncomfortable like this? And you're right. It'd be stuff like that where it's just like, you know how your man was. Y'all know what type of issues y'all got. Why did y'all bring them here <laughs> to us? Because nobody care. Nobody, nobody care. 
And I think that's it. People, because it's like you get used to dealing with a certain amount of crap, I think, on your own in private. And now you're here with your friends. And now we all see it. And now you're embarrassed. And so now y'all are being extra stupid. <laughs> you're embarrassed. Yeah, this is why I just let's not this, yeah. I don't know why you going on a couple trips with couples, but don't do what? that. Don't do that. I don't even like going on couple dates. I don't like going on couple dates. Okay. While we over here kiki and now he talking to my man about red pills and now I'm mad. Like, I don't, let's not, let's not do that. I mean, you're right. I feel you. I, 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 you're right. Cause I, I surely won't be making that mistake again anytime soon. Cause that was the first time it happened. I was just young and dumb. And, and yeah, and I remember I walked away from that experience of like, oh, don't travel with groups. And then I went on another group trip and then it wasn't, it was my friend. I didn't listen. <laughs> I didn't. <laughs> because it was because i had curated a good group the yeah. thing of it was like it was me and a friend who were celebrating our birthdays together and going on a trip the people i invited we were solid mm -hmm. the people she invited i was like why? everyone was like who brought these people yeah, why are no. they no i they contributed nothing they literally it was the it was the most awkward thing because we're all in this this like cabin that we have ever we have rented every room and, and i know and what was funny was like everybody else was single and it was like a really nice cabin like every bedroom had a fireplace and a, a like a like a balcony and like all this stuff and i think most of the single people we were like man i wish i was they ain't here with somebody mm -hmm. i'd be mm -hmm. taking full advantage mm -hmm. and these people was sitting here arguing and not only was they arguing by day they were sleeping with their bedroom door open which we all thought was very strange we're like so they're just so they're just like, not going to do it this whole trip. <laughs> and I wanted y'all to know. I wanted y'all to know. That's why y'all arguing. That's why y'all mad. <laughs> I want to just close the bedroom door. Oh, no. Y'all could have had a good trip. Yeah. <laughs> what y'all got to do. No, no, no. Yeah, no, no. I, yeah, did not, did not travel with couples especially if it's couples you don't even hang out with that regularly locally because you don't know their dynamic like even if you like no this is my homegirl she cool she level-headed she blah 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 mm -hmm. you don't know who she becomes when she is with this man that's true you do not know who she becomes <laughs> when she is with this man and this man tests her so i'm just thinking, yeah 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 if you have to do it make sure it is a dynamic girl y'all know kind of who yeah does, does everybody have common sense yeah mm -hmm. but yeah no i would not i would not do it i remember um this wasn't so much traveling but um uh, i was with my partner um long term this is me and his person i've been together for a couple of years and um his best friend and their girl had like came out to drinks and i knew the best friend i hung out with the best friend all the time but the girl was somebody like he was very on and off with and when they were on we just really didn't see her much so like i didn't we didn't know their dynamics and we all went out to eat and it wasn't supposed to be like a big thing me and him was just heading to like our local neighborhood bar we ran into them so it's like oh let's sit and when i tell you i have never been so embarrassed in my life and i remember just staring at the sitting at the table and staring at his friend just like why are you embarrassed are you are you embarrassed i have never i thought you were a fine young man with manners and and just just a discipline mm -hmm. y'all out here arguing and like they were throwing tater tots at each other at the table like y'all i'm the youngest person at the table i'm in my mid-20s Everybody else at the table is like, if not 30, like 29, about to be in their 30s. And they were, they were throwing tater tots at each other <laughs> mid-argument. And my dude is just ignoring it, staring at the game on the TV. <laughs> like, as if, like, maybe if we don't look, people don't think these people that are sitting at the same table came with us and just left me to deal with this embarrassment alone. And see, but that's what I mean. They should have put that aside. Like, we are out. You are correct. So that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, <laughs> we, was, we was still waiting for our food. But yeah, nah. yeah, we should have We should have just got up and left. I mean, it's okay. She eventually stormed out, you know, cussed him out, stormed out. 
And then he just continued dinner with us for a couple, like 20 minutes. We're like, I should go after her, huh? He was like, I mean, yeah, it's your person. Probably. Y'all live together. I, so as a general rule of thumb, traveling tra- with couples, if you don't know them like that, both of them and how they are together, don't travel with them. True. Very true. A lot of relationships are tested, I think, when people. Oh, travel. yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, because I think it's also that common sense factor. Like you get to find out who doesn't have common sense because there's so many things that we don't recognize that we think is common sense. And all it is is familiarity. Like all it is is really like this is their routine. Yeah. And then you just take them in new environments around new people, around new things. And you're like, oh, boy, oh, baby, you ain't got no type of common sense. Just stupid ass shit. Walking around shouting shit. He wasn't aware of America. He was walking around shouting shit in the middle of the night that I was just like, I'm just trying to silently get to our car in a sketchy neighborhood. And was like trying to make it like, I ain't scared nobody. I can't remember what he shot at me. He was shot and I was just like, if you don't shut the fuck up. And just like, I knew. I knew. And just wanted to have sex in the hotel the whole time. And I was just like, I got to end it with you. You have no curiosity. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You have no curiosity. You have. We came all the way out here. We spent all this money to to stay in a hotel room the whole time. Yeah, and you're right. I like you said that. Though, like certain things can just be like familiarity and routine, and like taking someone out of that and kind of seeing what that is like. I feel like that is a very eye opening experience. Yeah, yeah. travel. We, but y'all get yeah. married, travel together. Mm-hmm. And for me, it's a, it's more so seeing to like. Can somebody go with the flow? Are they like, all, because so many things can go wrong. <laughs> Mishaps can happen when it comes to traveling. Like, are you someone who's going to get like pissy about every little inconvenience mm-hmm. or like, can we just wait on this flight? Like, is it, it's not that big of a deal. Like, are you going to make those things miserable or are we going to be all right? I think like mm-hmm. that's a, I mean, but I'm like, even, and I know I, this is, <laughs> I know you're like her rest please I'm going to the extreme but even like are you gonna get mad and then like leave me at the restaurant in the strange city by myself that's not extreme I don't think that's that's not an extreme concern at all that's what with some of these uh young ladies out here trying to get so-called flued out and whatnot to these men they don't know look and that if you cannot if you don't have the money to fly yourself back home or you don't got a homegirl, somebody in that city, you always need a backup plan. I don't have enough, me- have enough money for a hotel night, have enough money to, if for some reason he ain't paying for food, you can pay for your own food, have enough money that you can get back. Cause that's a, I think that should be a real life concern for people. Cause mm-hmm. I know it's always been, a, even, you know, when people have tried to be, oh, you should come here, you should try. I don't know what type of foolishness you gonna pull when I get there and I don't wanna be stranded. And if I know that like, I wouldn't be able to take control of this situation to get me where I need it to be, then I don't want no parts. <laughs> but if you're traveling for these men or women, mm-hmm. or women, take some safety precautions. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know how people act when you in person. Y'all could FaceTime every day for four months. I don't care. You don't know how they're going to act when you guys are in person and you're in a new environment and these stresses are putting to the test. And all this. The ticket need to be in your name. <laughs> when it comes to buying flights, send me the money and I'll get my ticket. Where canceling return flights is crazy. Mm-hmm. And I, like I've heard that too many times, and I'm just like, that is crazy. To me. No, mm-hmm. send me the money and I'll book my own flight. There is no way. I just, I just, yeah, we mm-hmm. all gotta. Yeah, you're right. So, but before we go, one of the things, so me, Ashley was talking about this before we started recording. I was telling her, I can't remember how we got on the topic, but step how it came up and I was telling her, I was like, oh yeah, I was just actually talking the other day about this astro cartography. I think I'm saying that correctly. And essentially what it is, it's using astrology to see like what areas would be like best for you to travel to or to live in and how astrology influence the experiences you could have given where you are on the earth. So I've known about this type of astrology for a while. I just don't really 
get into it. It's hard to find people who actually like, who are astrologers that specialize in astro cartography. So you'll meet a lot of people who are astrologers who are good astrologers and you'll ask about this and they're like, yeah, I don't touch that. Like this is just mm-hmm. not their area. So you usually have to find someone, this is what they specialize in. I have never had this done, but uh, I was actually talking to a client of mine who recently was like looking into it and um, was telling me about like all the fascinating things she got from it. And so I sent a link to Ashley so she could look hers up. Me and her about to look at Arch together. I am currently in the Atlanta region and it is just... So before we even got on with you all, (laughs) me and Ashley both kind of looked at like our regions. And I clicked on mine and mine says I am living near my crossing Mercury over Pluto. Um, and basically what it says is in this area, you're, you're being intellectually stretched. Um, hectic is a part of your work life. You meet with high expectations, which force you to make wide ranging concessions. Basically, this is an intense, concentrated energies in this area, which... Yeah, yeah, that sounds about right. <laughs> I'm not happy about it, but I mean, y'all might be onto something. I might, I might be a thing. Um, so my line thing goes literally like directly through where I'm at, which is really funny to me. Um, so I'm in the Charleston area in South Carolina, and apparently it'll be more beneficial if I was on the eastern side of this line, which which I am. Huh? Okay. <laughs> um, let's see. The focus is on the renewal of your personal point of view, important areas from which you've derived your sense of security and deeply held connections are called into question. Sudden changes and severe measures are likely to influence your private family life. You might change your place or town of residence several times. That's funny. Your psychological irritability and nervousness can threaten your professional life. Unrest and excitement dominate your daily life. This is interesting. You wish to be independent. Oh, that is interesting. <laughs> so yeah, I know since moving here, I have felt like I've had, I've definitely had a lot of emotional, psychological, like growth just in general, but, but that was because I was in isolation and mm-hmm. I kind of had to, cause I didn't know anyone and stuff like that. So I feel like it clicked in that way, but yeah, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta look at this. Where is but I was clicking around because um, Cali keeps being brought up for me and I clicked on the line. So uh, near like Los Angeles, Beverly Hills type area, um, that is my son in DS line. And this whole line is about love, y'all. So this whole line, they're just oh, yeah. like consciously or unconsciously at this line, you're in search of a partner, completeness of some sort. You feel more socially integrated, identifying more with others and matching your own needs and interests, those of the life of your partner. Relating to others become a central issue. Um, And then it also talks about celebrating successes here. Yeah, and every encounter mirrors yourself and guides you to the role that is yours to play in the world. In these places, you may become more in the public eye. Uh, I don't know, y'all. I think I need to move to Cali. I think that it's all positive. I don't, I don't, I don't hear nothing negative. I feel like that's exactly where I'm supposed to be. So yeah, yeah. Universe, do your thing. Bring, bring me to Cali. You know, let a job come swoop me up. Cause that's sounding really, really great. And the astrology, you all know, I love me some astrology, but like, please do not up and move to Thailand because of astrology. <laughs> not because let's, let's get a little more stuff back rearranging our whole life my family could move me halfway across the country because jesus told them to then i don't see why (laughs) just wait (laughs) that was a very specific circumstance that we all agree was a bad idea so (laughs) let's not use that as an example but um yeah so i think that's fun i think next time i travel i will just kind of look and see and i know it's a thing also, but I am wondering, like, because um, I do want to move, but yeah, I'm in Atlanta and that's fine. Um, I would like to leave here very much. So I'm I'm just waiting for opportunities to knock on my door and be like, hey, you trying to go? It's fully paid. We'll, 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 we'll relocate you and everything. But 
utilizing it. I don't know like how much weight to give to it, but I think it's something kind of fun to look into if you have options. You're like, oh, let me look into some other stuff. Mm -hmm. Just seeing if it resonates with what you're feeling now and seeing if it resonates when you travel, whether it's for a move or I'm just I'm just going here and there for a couple weeks. And I don't know, I'm kind of testing the theory. Do you experience a change? I'm definitely curious about it. So yeah, I think the overall message though is to get out and travel. Yes, you can travel the world, but you can also travel the country. You can travel your state. Start small, but it is good for fun. Yes, it's good for stress relief. Yes, but it's also good to give you a new perspective. It's good to give you a break. It's good for you to re aligned and re-look at things maybe happening and going on in your life that you might be looking at it one way and taking that break away from your everyday or have you looking at it another way and it might be exactly what you need especially if you're feeling stuck in a rut i think overall what we're saying is get out there do the damn thing and just like we say stop getting in your own way emotionally so get your own way physically. There's more out there to explore. Now, that's all we have for today's episode. We appreciate you guys listening. If you listen to us on Apple Podcasts, please head over to Apple Podcasts and leave us a review. Leave us a review with some words. Also, feel free to share the podcast. We appreciate when y'all do that. If you're trying to reach out to us, you can reach out to us at SheWolfAlchemy podcast at gmail.com and you can also give us a follow on instagram at she she wolf alchemy now other than that that is all we have for today's episode you'll hear the sound of our voice again next sunday bye